everyone. We are now going to be uh, bringing on our next guest for whom I need to change some things on the screen. There we go. As you can tell from what's around me, we're going to be joined very shortly by Tina Donaty from Octane AI. Tina is a content marketer at Octane AI and a specialist in helping brands build powerful connections with their customers. That's the type of connection that drives sales, of course. And that, of course, all starts with getting to understand the customers better. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the latest insights from Tina on doing just that. So hello, Tina. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's very good to have you here. Um, right, let's get your slides shared and I will leave you to it if that's okay. Sounds great. I've just lost you. There you are. Right, far more <laughs> important for you to be on screen than, than me. Tina, it's awesome. all yours. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. So my name's Tina. Um, I am Octane AI's content strategizer and creator. And I'm really excited to talk about e-commerce beauty brands and some trends that we've been seeing. This talk actually comes at a really perfect time for us because um, we've been working with tons of beauty brands lately. Um, we've been writing a lot of guides about these trends as well. So this all just worked out really perfectly. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have time for questions. So I apologize if I miss anything, but I should have some colleagues of mine floating around in the chat who might be able to answer things. If you're watching from YouTube, um, you can actually email me later. My name's Tina at Octane, or my email's at Tina at OctaneAI.com. So, all right, let's do this. My um, talk is called Turning Browsers into Buyers. So how beauty brands can drive 12 to 30% more revenue with simple personalization. So um, in 2020, we saw a major spike in e-commerce. Um, you can see at the beginning of the year, things were kind of normal. The COVID-19 pandemic hit and suddenly in April, e-commerce, the industry just took off. And this shift is actually permanent. So with people relying solely on online shopping, even for essentials like toilet paper, um, the e-commerce industry saw this in an ex accelerated growth in one year that was actually originated, originally estimated to take five years. So um, this shift didn't just alter the merchant experience, it actually changed the consumer experience permanently too. So with more people shopping online, things that consumers started looking for and expecting from brands changed, leading to some new trends. So um, trends that are going on in the beauty industry right now. Consumers care about healthy and ethical products. So, um, you know, they don't just deem products as quality because of an expensive price tag. They're more concerned about finding products that are made naturally, um, offer environmentally friendly packaging, accessible, cruelty free. Also, more men are interested in the beauty industry. So, you know, we see this with brands like Beard Brand, where all of their products are actually solely just for men. Um, and that actually has led to some more gender neutral product positioning as well. And consumers are finding that more and more important. Um, you know, the beauty industry is no longer just for one gender. Everyone is invited to enjoy and celebrate beauty products and they want to see that messaging in your marketing. And we even see really popular influencers like James Charles, who have just become like such an important role model in the beauty industry for men. Um, and consumers also want more diversity and inclusivity. So, um, you know, traditional beauty really focused on one single image of a single type of woman. And brands are realizing now that this actually isn't inclusive to all the different skin colors and skin types that are out there. So, you know, people want products for all types of skin types, hair types, um, and they really want to have these diverse representations shown in the marketing that they see. And lastly, e-commerce and beauty is becoming very personalized. So customers are smart now. They know that not every product is going to work for them. They research beauty brands extensively before they even try them. Um, and they know how customized beauty products are. So, um, you know, knowing that it's really essential for the shopping experience to be customized and personalized to every unique individual. So this is especially important as we continue moving into the year where e-commerce is just continuing to rise. Um, and that's what I'll be focusing on. So keeping all that in mind, let me take you through a bit of a scenario. So this was you last February. Um, before the shift to online shopping, you were in the store, you were maskless, there were people around you, you could touch products, you could feel them. Um, and when you had questions, you could talk to a store associate. You could tell them what you were looking for, what your pain points were, 
um, what what solutions you were hoping to have from a product and right off the top of their head they could probably recommend you something that they know was going to work for you and you'd be able to purchase feeling confident that what you just bought is going to be the right product now the shopping experience is a bit different so people are online they're searching through really large product catalogs they can't feel or touch the products they can't talk to a store clerk and this experience can be a bit stressful um, it can honestly feel like you're kind of searching through a really massive warehouse where you're not sure where the right products are and you can't easily talk to anyone to find the right thing and even if you do find it you're not sure if it's actually right for you you're not sure if it's going to work with your hair or your skin or your nails you're not sure if it's the right color and you know you're not feeling confident to actually purchase that product so knowing that these are your customers pain points these actually cause some pain points too for the merchant um, with you know people shopping in the online space more so competition is extremely fierce right now um, you know we've seen so many brands pop up just in the last couple months from really big celebrities like jennifer lopez's j-lo beauty brand lauren conrad's beauty brand alicia keys's upcoming soul care beauty brand and again these are just within the past couple months so there's tons of competition and with new brands, there's new ways for consumers to discover them. So, you know, it's not just this area that's saturated, but the channels that people are discovering brands on are really saturated as well. So, you know, customers use so many channels to discover new products from TikTok to Instagram to YouTube. These all have such an influence over purchasing behaviors and customer intent. Um, but again, like I pointed out, there's so much competition in this space and beauty industry is only going to continue to surge. So because of so much competition, there's a lot of there's a lot of the same pain point that every beauty brand tends to face, which is browsers. So the lead time for beauty consumers is actually incredibly long. And this is because the intent to purchase just isn't super high. So there's a couple of reasons why this is for one, like I said, lots of competition in the space. Um, but also beauty products aren't always deemed as essential to customers. They're typically seen as a want purchase. Um, beauty brands um, or beauty products are also super, super custom to specific skin types and hair types. So it's challenging for customers to figure out what's actually best for them. And because of that, they're also hesitant to purchase products without the opportunity to test them first. And many customers don't have the product knowledge to be able to create their own routines because they're not really sure what products work well together or what work well or what works well with what they are currently using. And then when customers do find a brand that works for them, it's not often that they're going to switch to something new. They tend to stick to their favorites for a long time. I can definitely say this with the moisturizer I've been using for the last 10 years. So the question then is, how can we turn our browsers into buyers? All of these customers that are discovering our brand, landing on our website, looking at our products, how can we turn them from browsers into buyers? You need to change your products from being seen as a want to a need. So although the industry has seen this incredible growth, beauty products are typically considered self-care splurges, like a way to treat yourself. Um, so as a beauty brand, your goal is to make customers see your product as a need. And to drive that purchasing intent, you need to ensure every, um, every shopping experience feels as customized as the products that you sell. So when customers see brands tailoring the shopping experience to their individual needs, they'll realize your products are important and they'll see a benefit, for, a benefit from them to know that it'll bring them a solution that they're looking for. So then your products will become a need. So the answer is personalization. Personalization is key to all of this. And how can you start personalizing your customers' experiences? Let's go back to our scenario from earlier where you're a little bit lost in the warehouse. So rather than making your customers search endlessly through your product catalog and hope that they're gonna find the right products, what you can do is bring the same humanized elements of the shopping in a brick and mortar store to the online space. So start building virtual consultations and quizzes to collect buyer profile data and learn about who your customers are. And with that, you'll be able to create a humanized e-commerce shopping experience where you'll be able to intelligently recommend the best products, set of products, or even content that you know is valuable to those customers and that it is what they're searching for. So personalization is as easy as five steps. And the first one is connecting with your customers with a quiz. And not just any quiz, it's a quiz that actually collects deep customer insights that can be saved and synced across your other tech tools. 
Um, so we'll get into that. But then the next part is also we will get into what buyer profile data is and how you can collect that with your quiz, um, how to segment your customers into like minded groups, integrating that data across your 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 tech stack, and then finally building that personalization engine that's going to drive you so much more revenue and everything else. So connecting with your customers, there's a variety of quiz types that you can create um, from product recommenders, routine finders, educational quizzes, personal onboarding, character quizzes, personality quizzes, FAQs. Honestly, the, there is infinite possibilities of what you can create. So I'm going to just walk you through a couple just to show you. Um, so the first one is, um, I'm jumping around here. The first one is the Magnetic Lash Quiz by Glamnetic. So just super easy. It asks you what your eye shape is, what kind of lashes you want, um, the volume, if you care about what material they are, where you're going to wear your lashes, your age, and what your experience level is. And then it collects an email opt-in so that they can target you later and send you some other recommendations. And then finally, you get a really awesome set of lashes that they are recommending to you based on the questions you answered. The second one is a super easy one, just three steps, finding your shade. I'm sure everyone that's purchased beauty online knows the struggle of trying to match your shade when you aren't actually in the store. So this is a really great um, way to give customers the confidence that the shade's gonna be right for them when it shows up. So just in three questions, I have a full um, makeup set with foundation, concealer, and a contour stick. And what's really awesome about that is not only do you know these products are going to work well together, but they're going to work well with you too. And then the last one is super fun, a character quiz. Um, which Care Bear character are you? So you just answer a couple questions about your favorite things to do, what type of friend you are, and when your friend's sad, what are you going to do for them? Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? How young are you? What's your favorite type of self-care? Online shopping. Your favorite food? And favorite way to style your hair? And again, we have another email opt-in. And then finally, you get your Care Bear match. And what I really love about this one is it doesn't just give you the Care Bear match. But when you scroll down, then there is also a product recommendation based on the Care Bear it's telling you that you are. So it's just a really great way to understand more about your customers through fun questions like that, and then also recommend a really great product. And so there's many, many quizzes that beauty brands can create. Um, well, you know, recommending products and collecting key information about your customers' likes, their dislikes, their preferences, their demographics and so much more. And the important thing here isn't just about how engaging these quizzes are for your customers, it's that every, every question is capturing buyer profile data about the user taking the quiz. And that's what's essential for the personalization strategy that you're going to build. So now that we're talking about buyer profile data, let's get into that a bit more and explain what it is. So what are buyer profiles? A buyer profile is based on not a fictional representation like a buyer persona is. So unlike the buyer persona, you are actually collecting data and key insights about who your customers are, um, what their preferences are, their demographics, their intents, and so much more. And that gives you a full profile of who that customer is and what they need from your business. And you can then take that information to build much more accurate buyer personas when you're building your targeting. So elements of the buyer, prof buyer profile. Um, all the questions that you ask customers, whether they're related to your products or not, are collecting these key insights. So um, you can find out what cus where customers wear your product, like in Glamnetics Lash Quiz. And then you could send them an email saying, are you looking for lashes to the next party you're going to or for work? You can understand their, cons their skin concerns. So if someone's telling you that they have oily skin, you could send them um, you could send them a very targeted message about products that you know are going to combat their oily skin issues. Um, if someone says they have curly hair, offer them a shampoo to control frizz. So you can see how this starts to build that personalized engine. And buyer profiles give you like endless opportunity to engage with your customers in meaningful ways. And one of my favorite questions on this screen is which of the following cartoons did you like most as a child? This is actually through Doe Lashes quiz. 
Um, and to the to the person first looking at it, it probably just seems like a really fun question. But for doe lashes, this is actually a really intelligent way for them to understand a customer's age. So someone that watched Sailor Moon growing up is probably a bit older than someone who watched SpongeBob growing up. So collecting that in a fun way, they can then group customers into different age groups. So elements of the buyer profile, like I said, there's so much different data you can collect about your customers, their age, their gender, their location, their past purchases, um, their AOV, their purchase frequency, their color preferences, product preferences, and their intents. But you can even go even deeper than that. And you can understand a customer's lifestyle habits, their behaviors, their family details, just kind of like in the Care Bear quiz where they were asking me what kind of friend I am and where I, where I like to spend my time. You can get so deep with customers through these fun questions, and that just gives you so much more data to use when you're, when you're targeting them later. So what can you do with this data? Um, I'm going to tie in step three and four together and introduce you to Doe Lashes, a cosmetic brand that sells false eyelashes. So Doe Lashes' focus on email marketing has been so critical to their success. They use Klaviyo to send every email, card abandonment, welcome series, post purchase, and more. And they were trying to think of ways that they could increase revenue um, through this channel while providing a more personal experience. So that's when they impl implemented a quiz on their site, the Lash Quiz. So the, last, the Lash Quiz asked customers when they wear lashes, um, what, type of la what type of eyelids they have, um, what look they prefer, and also the age question as well with what cartoon character or what cartoon they watched growing up. Um, so, so many questions like that to understand more about the customer's needs. And then right before they give customers their answer, they ask for an email opt-in with 15% off their first order. And this has been a really successful strategy for them because they've actually collected 3x more emails through the quiz than their on-site pop-ups and 44% of their email opt-ins are driven from their quiz alone. So it's been super successful. And then they are able to take all of the information they're collecting with their quiz and sync it right to Klaviyo. Um, so by integrating their quiz with Klaviyo, all the opt-ins and the customer information is put into lists in Klaviyo. So they can segment customers into like-minded groups um, and match them in different ways to send them very personal email follow-ups. So just as one example, um, this was an email that Doe Lashes had sent to ask customers to take their quiz in the first place so that they could start learning more about them. And what was super interesting was they actually discovered they had an entire group of customers that had never worn false lashes before. And they had no idea that this customer group existed. They just assumed that everyone that was landing on their website probably had worn false lashes before and they were interested. So by discovering this through the quiz, they were then able to create an email campaign where they could educate this group of customers on what false lashes were, what doe lashes is, and what they sell, and help drive a little bit more of that purchase intent for them to want to try the product. So it's super fun on the merchant end. You're collecting this really awesome info. Um, you're hearing from your customers' perspectives, but from the customer, they're getting a super engaging experience where they get to answer questions and they get matched with a product that's super relevant to what they're looking for. So then this gives you this full marketing funnel where you can create ads or send emails to drive people in the top of the funnel to take your quiz and learn more about them, collect the information that you need and segment customers into different like-minded groups, and then personalize every content offer engagement and product with them moving forward. So that actually leads us into the last part of this personalization five-step process, which is now that you've shown how to, now that we've shown you how to connect with customers, um, why you need to start building your personalization engine. So you've engaged with customers, you've got all this great information through the quiz, and you want to leverage your buyer profile data. So sync your buyer profile data across um, all your marketing channels. So you can have really personalized um, emails. Um, SMS messages and Facebook Messenger messages that um, really share valuable copy and product offerings and even sales offerings. And even beyond this, you can get one, you can take it one step further later on and create really personalized landing pages and website experiences. Um, you can create recommended product section on your homepage that is really relevant to each customer. Create really targeted pop-ups to match customers to specific products or match them to product pages. And every paid ad can also be super personalized to you, especially with a Facebook pixel. So you can 
build lookalike audiences to um, target and retarget customers later. So for example, even content that you can be creating based on the information you collect. So if you learn that you have a group of customers with oily skin, um, you can create content to educate them with blog posts, videos, and infographics as well, and use that when you're following up with them. So using your buyer profile data, um, send customers a super personalized welcome series on Facebook Messenger and email or an educational flow trying to combat that oily skin problem to introduce, to introduce them to a new routine. Um, and if, if they abandon the cart or the, the product offering from the quiz, you could then hit them up later with a 20% discount on any of these channels too to try and bring them back and, and retarget them. And what's super awesome too is the analytics you have can show you so much about these customers. So if you find you have a certain group of customers that have a higher um, conversion rate or a higher average order value, you can then make a decision if you want to prospect similar audiences because that could mean a better return on your investment. Um, and by knowing who your customers are and, when they, and where they spend their money, you can also position your products and brand better towards them. Um, and like Doe Lashes, maybe you discover you have an entirely new audience and you can pivot your marketing strategy a bit to try and onboard them to your brand. So personalization is a full journey um, and it's not just for acquisition, it's an essential part of customer retention too, which um, you can see how these personalized experiences can you know, complete this entire customer journey map. So um, that's what I'm gonna walk you through now. So from taking the quiz, there's kind of two directions that the customer can go. Either they purchase the recommendation right away or they don't. In either scenario, there's something there to bring them back so that you're increasing your customer retention through these personalized experiences. So if the customer purchases, you've collected their data, you've learned what products they're interested in, and you can engage with them again in the future with a post-purchase campaign and bring them back. Um, this could be a new product announcement that's related to their likes, um, an upcoming sale with relatable copy or even a secondary quiz that asks them questions about their purchasing experience so you can collect feedback. If the customer abandons the quiz or the product recommendation from the quiz, you can still use the data to retarget them. So you could send them a browse or card abandonment campaign if they share their email opt-in, um, or you could put them through a welcome nurture to introduce them to your brand. You could also use a Facebook pixel, like I said, to build a lookalike audience and retarget them that way if they didn't give you an opt-in. Um, the options are really endless and those who, um, you know, eventually when you keep uh, retargeting them, they do come back and they make a purchase and then they go through the same funnel as the first one where then you can have those post-purchase campaigns and then just keep driving them back to your brand and build a really strong community of brand advocates. So, Quizzes and buyer profiles work. So here's just a bit of data um, from what we've seen with our, with our merchants that have been using our quiz. Um, so brands that have been using personalized interactive content drive 12 to 30% more revenue, and they see an average increase of 10% to their AOV. Um, and we've also learned that brands using Facebook Messenger AI for individualized personal one-on-one -on -one conversations see 80% plus open rates 48% average click-through rates and a seven to 20% increase in revenue. As an added bonus, um, once you start collecting data through your e-commerce quiz, um, you can actually drive more revenue on your other channels as well because personalized emails deliver six times higher transaction rates and personalized shopping cart recommendations influence 92% of buying decisions. So it's really, really essential to have um, this customer data so that you can really push a personalized experience for every customer engaging with you. So now if we go back to our scenario from the beginning, the customer was once lost in your giant warehouse and now they've been recommended a product that's based on what they want, based on what they need and they're ready to order, they feel confident. And so they order and you thank them for your purchase. So um, you've got a really great experience that's giving your customers confidence and they're happy and they're gonna stay loyal to you. So we covered a lot. Um, just a quick recap, competition in the beauty space is fierce. You have to turn your, your browsers into buyers with personalized experiences that show them your products are essential. Customers are becoming smarter. They know beauty products are so customized and you must give them the same customized experience. There's really no excuse for not offering personalization in 2021. And simple, per simple personalization can happen in just five steps. Engage with your customers, collect the buyer profile data, segment them, 
integrate it with your tech stack, and then build that personalization engine across all of your channels. And quizzes work. They're the best way to get started with personalization today. So thank you so much. Um, make sure to check us out at octaniai.com. Um, we are the all-in-one platform for quizzes, Facebook Messenger, and SMS marketing. And we also have um, a full 400-page playbook on personalization as well. So you can get that at octaniai.com slash playbook for free. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at tina at octaniai.com and I'd be happy to help you. Oh, tina, that was superb. Thank you. So I love how people take this simple idea of the quiz and they take it in so many directions. So um, I, I'm, I will be downloading the playbook myself and I suspect everyone listening is going, so many ideas, <laughs> so many ideas. Well, look, um, thank you so much, Tina. We'll leave that thank ticker you. taping um, under there whilst I, whilst I do the next bit, but we'll say bye to you for now. So thank you, Tina. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.